Uh, welcome to the webinar. Uh, so in the last webinar, we talked about the different modeling approaches. And uh, we mentioned that it will depend on what you want your, uh, from the, what you want from your utility model. Um, you might remember this decision tree. So the questions that we need to ask ourselves is, do we want real-time optimization? Um, do we want to be able to connect our model with process simulation models that we might have available from our side? Do we want to build a model on a platform that is known um, by our staff or that follows a, a modeling logic that they are used to? So to today we're going to follow the path um, where we want to have the opportunity, perhaps in the future, to link our steam system with other process simulations. And uh, we also want to build our simulation on a modeling environment that our engineers are used to. Uh, and what I mean by that is it's a process simulator. Um, so today we start our journey on steam modeling using, using PetroSim. Uh, so PetroSim, PetroSim version 6, has now um, dedicated unit operations that allow us to model steam systems using the traditional drag and drop and PetroSim, PetroSim environment. On this slide you see uh, some of the characteristics, but um, Better just to jump and see the, the presentation, the, what we can do with Petrosim. Okay. So I built a very simple model of the, the utility system, and I'm going to take you through all the different components. But before, before we start, um, I would like to mention us, when you build any other model, that you need to bear in mind what type of uh, property package you use. And in the case of utility systems, we have for Petrosim, MDS Steam. Okay, so you will see from all the list of utility systems, you should select MDS Steam as your property package. Okay, going back to the simulation now. Okay, so now you will see on New version six, a lot of new unit operations that are just related to um, steam modeling. Okay. You can see the gas turbine, burners, steam gens, and we will look into those in detail on, on a future webinar. Okay. We also have steam use, uses, um, the aerators, the superheaters, the headers, um, turbo generators, which is multi-stage turbines and simple boilers, turbines, which are back pressure turbines and, and steam generators. Okay. So as I said, I built a simple model of a utility system and let's just start with the boilers. Okay. So you can see um, on the design tab you have the connections, you will need to allocate a boiler pit water, steam as an outlet, and blow down as an outlet. And you can add um, multiple fuels, so energy streams to define different type of fuel. In this case, for simple boiler, up to three fuels um, can be used. If we go to parameters, then you need to define um, the steam temperature, okay? which is the temperature the steam is sent to the network. Okay, we have steam drum temperature, which is saturation temperature. It's a temperature inside the evaporation drum of the boiler. We have blowdown ratio, okay, and this number is relative to the steam mass flow. We have steam, um, rate of steam load and rated fuel duty, and they are related um, to the design, okay? So the, the rate of steam load is the maximum load uh, during normal operation, okay? And this value will be used to set um, or to change, okay, the efficiency when we have defined or if we define um, efficiency based on, on, on the boiler load, okay? And we will we'll, we'll show you um, this on the fuel info in a minute. Okay. Rate of fuel. Uh, this is a design amount of fuel. Okay. Then you can also allocate heat losses. 
okay? In this case, if this is for all the losses, uh, for losses other than the, uh, from the stack flue gas, and it is normally used to represent radiation losses. If we go to fuel information, okay, as I mentioned, okay, you can have or you can define the efficiency for each type of fuel, okay, depending on how you are also, um, how the, the duty is going to be split between the different type of fuel. As you can see here, I just allocated 100%, so I put one, and the percent of, of the duty will be on this fuel, which I call Q100. Okay. In terms of efficiency, I just kept it simple here, and I say, well, it's going to be 90%. However, if you want this boiler efficiency to change depending on the load, you just need to add the defined P2 and P3. Here you can see um, the equation. Okay. Well, you have using no variables and using nodes as you have normally in, in Petrosim, so you can make your nodes of assumptions or whatever else you think is relevant on that um, borders or on the border or borders. Worksheet is also a standard uh, Petrosim, so you can see in this case for all the streams in and out, um, some important properties like temperature, pressure, flows, enthalpy, and so on. Okay. Performance it just tells you how the boiler is doing in terms of say absorb duty, the fire duty, so using the efficiency, what's the overall efficiency, so some some information that you will, might want to see. And the plant data, okay, you will see this on most unit operations and this allows you to, to compare the data with any measure values. Okay. But obviously you need to, you need to define um, where the data gets from um, in the fixed connection from pi um, is different from the yeah, so, so that's, that's a different um, set from on Peterson. So it's not it's not related on this uh, to this webinar. Okay. In terms of the the headers, okay, I'm going to talk about the headers. Um, Effectively, they work as a com work as a combined mixer and, and splitter. Okay. You see the connections. Okay. You need to define what goes what goes in, what goes out. Just okay. but also automatically will will go a vent, loss, uh, and condensate, and that those streams are automatically created once you once you connect the header, just because it's used um, to balance the header. So if you, if you put a lot more um, steam than is required by the header, you will see a bend. Okay. Uh, in terms of the parameters, you will need to define the header pressure. Okay. Then you will also need to define if you if you let the header to be a dynamic header, so it, its temperature will will change depending on um, the inlet, or if you want to control the temperature. Um, these mass and heat losses are used when you set a base case and then you want to try and see what the changes are um, when you're running, let's say, a what if analysis. Okay. It will show you um, the changes between your base case and the different cases you, you, you want to try, um, you're trying. Watch it is the same as before in terms of performance. It gives you a summary of what's happening in the header. So what's the steam going in, steam going out, is any condensate, if there's any imbalance, and, and again, uh, the same from the energy point of view, uh, heat in and heat out. I'm just going to jump now to the steam users. As you can see here, so the connection. We need to define where the um, steam comes from. It will come from a header. Um, any condensate lost, condensate recover, just mass streams, and as an energy stream, I need to remove that. That's optional. Okay. In terms of the parameters, you can define different types of um, users. It's relatively easy to, to add the user. You just press insert user, and if you want to remove it also, just, just, just remove the user. Okay. So you can see 
that we can define two different, two, two different types of, of uses, team uses, okay? We can have it duty based, okay? Let's say if we have a ring boiler, we would typically define it with a heat duty. And if you have live uses, let's say um, stripping steam, and you define it as live, and you define a mass flow. Also, if you define um, heat and steam uses, like as I did here with this ring boiler, you can also allocate uh, a percentage of, of condensate recovery, so how much of that steam is actually recovered. The result is just a summary of the uses on that header. Okay. There's total steaming, how much heat is used, how much of the condensate is recovered, and it gives you an overall condensate recovery. Okay. But here, as you can see, I just did. So loss is all the condensate that is lost, let's say, from um, the stripping steam, and then condensate recovered based on that percentage condensate recovery, and in this case, I just send it to a mixer that in the end goes to a flash, flash drum. Um, now, talking about the turbines, there are two different types of turbine, as I mentioned here. So we have the steam turbinator, so it's multi, multi-stage turbine, more, more than one outlet. And we have what is defined here as a turbine group, which is just mainly back pressure turbine. Okay, so let me just start with the turbine group. Here you can see here. Okay, so we need to define steam in, steam out, so an energy stream in terms of duty. If we have the superheating, we can define the superheating stream. Okay. Here I just add uh, one turbine, but if you want to add more, again, as the use is very, it's very simple. It's pressing send turbine and you just need to, to uh, complete the information. Here is uh, on the status symbol is design power, if you know it. Status, it could be on, off, or roll. Okay? And if, if you are going to use roll or rolling, you just use, um, you need to define how much steam it's going to use to keep it hot rolling. In terms of flows um, and duties, we need to define it per equipment. Okay. We can have a duty base or mass flow. Let's just click here. Okay, so you, let's say, potentially you can define just based on mass. And once you know, once you have this number, you can just say that it's going to be duty base. And this will reflect any change that you make, let's say, on, on the header. If you increase the pressure of this header, you decrease the pressure of this header, it will affect or it will change. Um, the amount of steam that is required to achieve this duty. Then we have efficiency. Okay, we just define the efficiency and the mechanical losses. In terms of the results, again, you would do it for all the all the turbines that, say in this case, go from high pressure to medium pressure. We'll tell you the total amount of steam that is used. So in out and the total duty. Okay, this is for the whole group rather than individual users. If you want to see individual users again, just go here and you will see it. In terms of the turbine generators, so multi-stage turbine, we need to define inlet, we need to define the outlet, okay? If we have condensing, we need to define um, an energy stream for the condensing and an energy stream for the power. Overall, um, so we can define power generation if it's fixed, okay? So it will tweak um, the amount of steam on one of the outlets until you get the defined power or if it's variable, okay? And then in that case, you will need to define um, the inlet steam and all the outlets, okay? and it will give you power so you can change um, depending. So. So it depends how you want to set it, if it's duty fix, okay, so you fix this, and in this case we have three outlets, so you will define two of the outlets, one will be variable, and if it's variable, we will define all the outlets, and the, the power will change. Um, okay, in terms of efficiency, we can have defined mechanical losses, so we can use 
six stage efficiencies, or if you have um, enough data, you can develop your own efficiency using um, Wayland coefficients. Okay. Stage wise, you can see here, I just kept it simple, so I just allocated um, the same efficiency for all the stages, but again, you can use um, Wayland coefficients. In terms of the performance, it tells us um, what happens on each stage, okay? Tells you how much cooling water we want, what's the efficiency, how much power is generated. Okay. And again, as before, if you have any plant data, you can just compare with plant data, okay. whatever you get from PI or PhD of your data history. Okay. Um, okay, so we, we talk about the boilers, talk about um, Steam users, talk about the turbines. Let me talk about steam generators. Okay, you have steam generator here. Again, you need to define um, quality water in, you need to define blow down and the steam coming out. In terms of the parameters, again, you just have one piece of equipment here, but you could add as many as you want. Just press insert item, just name it, put a description. Okay, as for the users and for the turbines, it could be duty-based or it could be based on steam flow. In this case, it can be steam flow, but you can just easily change to duty-based and you could change here, okay? And the amount of steam will change um, automatically. You need to define at what temperature the steam is generated and you need to define the blowdown, okay? Let's uh, jump to the results. and. The result will show you for the all um, generators that you have at that level, okay, you will put them together here. So it will tell you the total amount out, of steam out, how, how much is that worth in terms of duty and the overall blow down. Okay. So when we build steam model, we also need some, some more unit operations, so we will need, let's say, letdowns of the superheaters, okay, and we will need the aerators. So for the the superheaters, okay, okay, you need to define steam in, steam out, and the superheating water. Okay. You need to define um, if you're gonna use saturation temperature or if you want to use a set temperature, okay, in this case I just left the saturation. So it's relatively simple to define what was happening under the superheat. In the deerators, the deerators, okay, we see the connections, we need steam in, so deeration steam, usually from low pressure. Uh, we need to define condensate, that takes condensate return, we need to define a makeup water stream, and an outlet stream, which is going to be the oil feed port. In terms of parameters, we need to define um, the operating pressure, okay? And we need to define how much bent. Um, put very in mind, it's gonna be mass flow. If you don't wanna define it as a mass flow, you can easily use uh, the Peterson, okay, the capabilities. In this case, you just insert the spreadsheet here. And you can define, let's say, I want it based on ratio, so you can just do the calculation here, I'm saying um, this is the amount of boil feed water that I need from that deerator, this is the ratio I want the vent, and I just make simple calculation which is multiply that boil feed water by the ratio. Okay, and I just simple later, just drag this into here. So you press um, the right click of your mouse and just drag it to wherever you want. Okay, and that's what I that's what I done that's what I done here. Um, Performance, as you can see, it tells you how much condensate goes in, how much makeup water, um, the temperature, okay, temperature before the preheat and after the preheat. In this case, um, I mean, you can always model it using a heater or if you have some more stream, some, let's say some waste stream heat and you actually want to know what effect is, you can use a heat exchange, okay? However, if you don't want any of that, um, this is what you see here, a preheat 
so you can define just a, a heat um, an energy stream, okay? and then you decide well how much is going to change after the mixer. So once the condenser returns mixed with the makeup water, and you can have you, you also have some other some other results in terms of how much purity of water, how much is steam. Okay. Something else that I want to mention if you're going to give it a shot to build your own steam mold is this recycle here. Okay. Usually recycles are from forward. Okay, so it goes from whatever you get here, information you get here, you will have it on the recycle. So it will allow the iteration. However, when you build the steam mold, you will see it's pretty much like that for all of them. Okay, you will see here forward, forward, forward direction. Then you go to parameters, tolerance, you can see everything is forward, except the flow. Okay, the flow is backwards. And it's because we need to know how much um, steam and the superheating water we, we need on the on the mode to set what is the demand, what is the demand from the generator. So that's why that one is uh, set up in forward backward, okay, because it comes from all here into here. Some of the operations you can see here, like the pump, just the standard petrol margin, so I'm not going to spend too much time on it, okay. You just need to define inlet and outlet streams, and you need to define efficiencies, and pressures, okay, all the pressure. Also, the flush drum you see here, it's just, again, it's just a standard separator, okay, two, two phase separator uh, of Peterson. And what I've done, I just link all the condensate that comes from my users, okay, by a mixer, okay. I let it down to the operating pressure, and I just put my um, separator, okay. Just my separator, and that the steam that comes from the top, I just link to my header, the low pressure header, and the condenser. I just send it to condenser return here, which in the end is sent to the to the VR8. Okay. So again, the beauty of this is that you can build your steam mold, and you can still use all the unit operations that you have on on Petrosin. and as I mentioned before, it's just drag and drop, so you just select your item, the item you want, you just paste it there, you can just put it there. This is very easy, you can just move it. Okay. So it's in use, you can just go there and just drag and create see, standard address I'm not going to go much more into detail on that, but as you can see, it's fairly simple to build them all. Okay. Um, and we're next, on, a, on the next webinar on the series, uh, we're going to build a mold using Petrosin, and you will see how easy it is. So that, that's it from our side. Okay. So if you have any questions, please feel free to get in touch with us. Thank you very much.